altitude and the thin air that goes with it are all enemies of man and his high-performance machines. But for these guys, that just makes it better. Chris Vincent is looking to keep his winning ways, and that makes him a target of the rest. Today, the streets of Deadwood, South Dakota are paved and peaceful. It wasn't always so. Deadwood in the late 1800s was a boom town. To relax, you played poker at the number 10 saloon. James Butler Hickok, Wild Bill, played there in 1876. He held a pair of aces and a pair of eights when he was shot in the back. The dead man's hand put Wild Bill in the cemetery near Calamity Jane. Well, there's still action in Deadwood, South Dakota, but it's in the form of snow cross. This track is awesome. Let's take a look at it. And it's one of the tracks where the start line and the finish line are on different locations, and here it gets interesting in a hurry. Looking to the flag now. Come on, we're gonna go green flag right now. And here we go, boy, they all jam side by side immediately. A big gaggle sends several of them back. Eichen had actually got squeezed and he ended up going around one of these course markers. Had to wait for the field to go by to get in clear. That first place qualifying effort is gone. But meanwhile, Claire Morgan outside, got the whole shot through. He leads strongly. That's Todd Pepper right behind him, coming up in second and closing. Then there's Kirk Crapel, the guy that Heiken got into it with. And there is a look at Morgan. There's that unmistakable stand-up style. And the longer the race goes, Paul, the rougher this track gets. That plays into Morgan's riding style. He won it all in the loop. He's looking for a back-to-back -to -back double to start the season off the post -up. So the question at this point is, can Vincent hang on? Boy, Wolf just puts it up on its tail as they climb the hill. And Vincent comes sliding into the side of Todd Tupper. He yeah. gets it back on again, but that had to hurt that arm even more. I would think so, and it also cost him a couple of spots. And the problem is, of course, all the while, Blair Morgan, with no pressure, can focus on line so he does better than anybody else who's opened up a huge. You're looking at Blair Morgan. He's the leader. He's been the leader right from the start. The battle has been behind him. There's second place, Kurt Crapo, followed by Tom Wolf. And they've broken off their fight for the moment. Dennis Ekstrom is now up in fourth, and Chris Vincent is trying desperately to hold on to fifth. Three to go now. Blair Morgan has been absolutely stellar here. I mean, you don't even see anybody in the frame with Blair anymore. There's Kurt Crapo running in second. But you can note, look at how Crapo is working a little bit harder over all the bumps. There's Wolf a little bit different line. There's the great ride by Extra Ben Vincent. Here comes Crapo. Look at Wolf and Ekstrom, though. Ekstrom puts a nose on Wolf, gets past, and Ekstrom picks up third place. And look at that. That is the gap now between Morgan and this battle for second. It's immense. And Crapo cannot relax. There's no question. Ekstrom is really starting to come in. Although Crapo now running behind that extra flight. But oh, Ekstrom just tasted it. Paul got it underneath. Boy, Ekstrom with a fast move. Crapo is not going to give it away that easily, though. They come side by side. They're on the final lap. A switch back as Ekstrom comes to the inside, breaks hard, and makes his move. And look at this. Crapo's in trouble, Ekstrom goes on. In the final lap, Curtis Crapo had a great run in second place all the way to this lap, has to give it up to Dennis Ekstrom. He's still recovering, he's in the top five, and Morgan, huge move. Blair Morgan takes the win in the final jump, followed by Ekstrom. Here he comes. Walt is lined up behind Ekstrom, Curtis Crapo, and then Chris Vinson. Let's take a look at this. This is showing you the distance that Blair Morgan had over everybody else. And now Ekstrom takes the flag, followed by Todd Walt. Now here are the final results of the Pro Stock Final with Blair Morgan taking his second in a row. So we're ready to go with the Pro Open Final as the racers all move to the line. So now we're set to go. This is the Pro Open. Temperature right at 32 degrees. It's a beautiful day. And all the racers set with the second line behind the first. Look over on the far left. Claire Morgan lined up way on the outside. That's not like Claire. Look at this as they come up the hill. 
Oh, good fight here, but look at the launch that Blair Morgan got as he screams up the hill and takes the lead. He takes the lead, takes lots in the second. That's Bohansky third. And they come ramping around the top. Oh, and Heikkinen. Tony Heikkinen gets caught up somewhere and is well behind the remainder of the field. He just got forced wide, and then he got up on top of one of those berms. And look at this, the two teammates now battling it out big time. Whoa, somebody's down. That's Vincent. Vincent has gone over. There's Noel right there. And then, of course, there's a big gap back to now Tony Heikkinen, who's running in four spot. Noel up to the hairpin. There is Heikkinen. And remember, he's charged up to the back of the back row, Paul. He's got six laps of LCQ action under him already. This guy is unbelievably fit. Tony may have used it up just a little bit as he came up through the pack to get the fourth. Uh oh! Oh, he just stopped! Heikkinen just stopped on the court. Extra comes by, so does Crapo. The rest of the field, it's a mechanical, but we have no idea what is wrong with Tony Heikkinen. That's a tough place to park, too, not for Tony, but for the other riders. That's that final turn of the S's that leads you on that long uphill climb. Morgan's coming up to lap his teammate, Earl Weimer. Of course, Earl knows Morgan was coming way wide to let him get through. It'll be interesting to see now when Ken starts to close up on Reimer. He's my pick. Well, Gibson should be over the jump shortly here, though he's still a long way back. Blair Morgan is showing his style of running away with this thing. There's Ken Ibsen. Morgan gets the indication of one lap to go. We're on the final lap of Ibsen's second. And you know what? Obviously, Noel would love to win this thing, but if he holds on to a podium finish, this was the race, as I said last year, where he broke his knee, ended his season, to come back with a podium and throw the final. I think that's going to be pretty sweet. And yeah, that'll be a substantial personal victory for Noel Bohansky. And what a run for Kent Ibsen as well, as the rookie still sitting in second place, unchallenged, not challenging the leader. So three good stories right there at the top with Blair Morgan just looking as powerful as ever. Dennis Ekstrom in fourth, and it's this kind of consistency where he chips away at points that has him up at the points. Look at Morgan, he's got such a big lead, he's letting the crowd uh, just say hi. I give you a few waves, talk to all of you, how are things going, nice to see you today. Oh, by the way, I am the winner of the Pro Open Final at Denver. A little no foot neck neck trick, this is fun. <laughs> and Ken Ibsen, he makes the turn for the checkered flag, nice run, nice finish for him. We want for no Kohansky because he'll be coming across. There he is. And as Greg mentioned, this is a great personal moment for him owing to the injury here one year ago. But he's going to have to fight for it. Oh, you know, he almost let Ekstrom get past him. Blair Morgan takes the win, followed by Ibsen and Kohansky. Well, Blair Morgan's kind of the man now. He's the leader in points in pro stock. But in pro open... It's a little different story, despite his win. That win brought him into the top ten in points, finally, but Ekstrom, through consistency, is your point. A new millennium is dawning on the WSA Snowcross Tour, with a new star emerging. 19-year-old Dennis Ekstrom, racing for Steve Shearing's upstart Amosoil team. He's begun an all-out assault on the season point standing. This shy but likable young man on his black steed takes his racing seriously, putting on a real show in Deadwood, South Dakota, as he took on veteran Curtis Crapo and gave him no quarter. 